Michael Jordan is not only the best basketball player, but he's the most exciting basketball player to ever play. Tatum fires away, pumps it in. The Big Three NBA podcast is powered by Prize Picks and the Game Time app. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Big Three NBA podcast. I'm host Ace Rod Blakely, and I'm joined by Michael Curtis of the Dallas Morning News. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Can't complain. Can't complain. Early season. Um, it's an interesting, interesting landscape out there, man. Um, just covering, obviously, the defending Western Conference champions and. Dallas, they're they're not looking like title contenders right now. I can say that. I and I can I, and and if anyone knows about non-title contenders, it's my brother Mike Curtis who covered the Detroit Pistons for a minute. Uh, saw some of the uh, memorable basketball, uh, not in a good way. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to, you know, as you just touched on Dallas and just kind of some of their early season struggles. Can you you get a sense of like why having things kind of you know, come together the way they obviously wanted them to, especially considering how last season ended and how they, they brought some of the, you know, some of the core guys back from that team. Yeah, it's a lot of interesting dynamics at play right now. Um, I think obviously you got to start at Luka Doncic. Um, he didn't have preseason training camp due to a left calf contusion. So this is his first time really getting an opportunity to play with his new teammates and Clay Thompson, Quentin Grimes, Najee Marshall, um, Spencer Dinwiddie is back. So I think a lot of those guys are getting used to playing with Luka. And um, they're, 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 they have a tendency to have slow starts. And Jason Kidd went off about it last night. Um, he said they're not playing with any any fight, any effort. Um, he, he needs some type of energy off the bench, and he's not getting that production out of his bench. They've, they scored nine points off the bench last night against Phoenix. Um, and it tied a season low from two weeks ago when they played in Phoenix when they scored nine points. So um, it's something trending right there with that team against Phoenix that they just can't get it together uh, from a bench aspect. But they're not healthy either. Derek Lively, the second, um, is dealing with a right shoulder sprain. He's doubtful for tomorrow's game against the Nuggets. Uh, P.J. Washington has missed some time um, due to a right knee sprain. And Maxi Kleba has also been out um, due to a hamstring um, injury. So they're, they're they're having some early season struggles for sure. Now, when you talk about those those early season struggles and you talk about just the bench not uh, being as impactful from a scoring standpoint, obviously, as Jason Kidd and, and, and the Mavs would want, is there any part of that conversation attributed to Luca being Luca, because typically when you have teams that have really dynamic, high impact scores, sometimes those bench guys, they feel like, well, you know, I rebound here. I play a little defense and he take care of the scoring. Uh, <laughs> is there some of that that might be going on with the Mavericks? Just guys are too uh, comfortable deferring to Luca, Kyrie and some of the big time scores on that team. Yeah, I think Kyrie talked about it last night, actually. There's a difference when you're a star player and when you're a role player. You're limited to 10, 15, 20 minutes off the bench. and You got to be successful in that role no matter what it is. Like everybody knows the ball is going to go to Luka and Kyrie and, and Clay Thompson forever, rather now. Um, but what are you going to do when you get an opportunity to shoot, you get an opportunity to play mate? Um, and you kind of don't take advantage of the opportunity. I think I think the Mavs need a lot, a third, I won't say a third score because in essence, Clay Thompson is supposed to be that. Um, it's interesting because he looked really great. He looked like he fit well with the team um, in the first couple of games. I think they were prioritizing him a little bit more. Um, I think recently they've gone back to how they, they're used to playing, if that makes sense. Like Luka Doncic, ball dominant, Mm -hmm. um, he's going to get his shots up. And sometimes it seems like Clay's just out there waiting on the ball. So I think they need to involve him a little bit more um, and, and take some of the burden off of Luka. So um, like, like you mentioned, role players, it, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of acquiesce to a new situation, especially when you got like Quentin Grimes and Najee Marshall. He's gotten a start actually as of late um, just because of PJ Washington's injury. And he's, kind of showed a little bit more of what he can do as far as playmaking with the ball and such, but they got to find some type, some, some type of um, production from guys outside of Luca and Kyrie. 
Yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought up Clay Thompson because, you know, from the outside looking in, you know, people look at that as your number three score, Dallas. But yeah, it, watching him play, I'm reminded as to why Golden State was kind of cool with letting him bounce. Uh, Clay Thompson, I don't, I don't think he's necessarily a bad player now, but clearly the Clay Thompson that could get you like 20 points in a quarter, I'm not sure that dude is coming in the building anytime soon. How has that been for the Mavs just adjusting to this? a new kind of Clay Thompson. Cause I think most Mavs fans were thinking this is a splash. This is one of the splash brothers who was killing us year in, year out. And, you know, Clay with, with no fault of his own, I'll put it on father time. He just doesn't seem to be that player, still a good player, but doesn't seem to be that guy anymore. Yeah. I think we've seen two different versions of Clay Thompson. I think we've seen, um, like I mentioned earlier, first three games that I think they were prioritizing a little bit more of that space and gravity that he, that he um, creates just by being a, a perimeter shooting threat. He was able to get as wide open <laughs> as he probably probably has been in his career. He was able to take gather dribbles and just shoot and let it launch and let it fly. Um, he's still getting some of those shots, but it's not with the fr- same frequency that, that it once was. Um, he's averaging 14 points off 36 percent um, from three. He averaged 38 percent from close to 39 percent from three last season on and averaged 18 points last year with Golden State. So um, a decrease in in production from sc- scoring wise. But he's been playing solid defense. But I think w- once he does get the ball, he's he's pressing a little bit because he goes through spells where he doesn't get the ball at all. So. Um, he's trying to get those shots up as much as he can, but I think they just need to um, run more design, pin downs, get 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 him some shots um, that he can kind of get get create a rhythm going. Yeah, and you had mentioned right off the top, just you know, uh, the, just the health of Luca was one of the things that you know was an issue at the beginning of the season. He wasn't, he literally wasn't able to be out there. How much? talk has there been about his conditioning because I know last season there was a lot of talk about it not being where it needed to be uh and it took him a while to kind of get into that that type of shape and condition to really be significantly impactful uh he's always impactful but it seems that when he's in great shape he becomes a different much damn near unguardable player he's damn near unguardable even when he's not in great shape how much has that weighed in on just some of the, the the physical setbacks that he's had and is that something that that you know Jason Kidd and, and the coaching staff have talked about yeah it's it's always been a constant um in Lucas career I don't think it's it's been as prevalent this year um because when he came into training camp when he got to media day he looked lean he looked very much in shape we know he was working out um ramping up for training camp prior to and he also played with his national team Slovenia trying to qualify for the um, Olympics so I don't think he was ever out of shape but the injuries have set him back and it has contributed a lot to his kind of shooting struggles uh, to start the season he averaged a career high from three last year and he's he's been struggling to shoot shoot the ball um, and I think particularly the the Mavs look a lot the Mavs like to go to Luka a lot in the first quarter. They like to let him go, go dominate, play all 12 minutes. Um, I think that's only been the case once this this season. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they typically like to get him going because once he gets going, he can kind of get his teammates involved. But I kind of think they need to flip the script and get everyone else involved before they go to Luka, before Luka kind of like just dominates the ball as much as he does. And the thing about it, Kyrie Irving has been – been great. He's been sensational. He's shooting 50% from three um, this season. I think he'll be leaned on a lot, especially if Luka can't go tomorrow um, because he's dealing with a left groin injury. So Mm. um, it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. But nine games in, this team isn't looking like um, the Western Conference Finals champions that they were last just a few months ago. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you you bring up Kyrie because one of the things that for those of us who've covered him before – recognize him going to Dallas was that that was a situation that seemed the perfect fit for him because as long as he's there 
Luke is always going to be the main draw, the main guy, the, the one that most of the pressure to win was going to fall upon his shoulders. And Kyrie was just going to be that that super powered, high impact Robin uh, to Luca's Batman. And with Luca having some of the you know physical ailments that have kind of set him back a little bit and kept him off the floor, more attention, more focus has been on Kyrie. How has he handled that for the most part? And, and just from your perspective. Yeah, he's very poised. He's very strategic in what he wants to do. Um, he's not rushing a lot of his shots. He's mm-hmm. taking his opportunities when he when he gets them. Um, he, I think he understands that w- with the slow starts, with the shooting struggles of Luca and a lot of the other guys, that there needs to be more of a, um, I guess, emphasis on his scoring load. Mm-hmm. Um, he's averaging 23.7, um, 4.8 rebounds, 4.8 assists. So, 23, 5, and 5 on 50% shooting and over 50% from three. I don't think you can ask more from Kyrie. I think he's doing a good job defensively as well, despite his size. You know, um, that's that's usually been a detriment in his career just because he, he's not able to kind of um, just, just just be a deterrent on that side of the floor. But as far as leadership, he, he's trying to galvanize his group. Um, he understands that there are new personalities um, on the group that, that – he has to kind of figure out how to deal with. I think he he mentioned that a, a couple of nights ago in one of his post game pressers. But I think he's taking the challenge of being the go to guy while the Mavs are trying to figure out figure things out. Yeah, because I mean, in, when you look at his career, I mean, he's kind of been in and out of that role. You know, he was in that role when there was no LeBron, and then LeBron joins forces, and now he's in that next to the man role and then LeBron leaves and he's back to being the man comes to the, to Boston they want him to be the man didn't want to didn't necessarily want to do that uh and and now in Dallas it just seemed like this was the perfect fit because as long as Luca was around he's not going to be counted upon to be that guy and then of course now Luca you know, is dealing with some injuries and there's a little bit more spotlight on him but the, the struggles that Dallas has had to just really get back to where they were a, a year ago uh has kind of opened the door for some other cats to be kind of running you know having run of the land so to speak out west and i wanted us to i wanted you to talk a little bit about oklahoma city uh they had a great season last year didn't quite get over that hump in the playoffs they seem to be even better this year i mean from from what you can tell why, why is oklahoma city basically picking up where they left off only they seem to be doing it at an even better clip than they did you know they've done in the past yeah, Oklahoma City is playing really well. They're eight and one, um, second in the West currently, uh, behind Phoenix. I think they're tied. They actually have the same record, but I think it's just because Chet Holmgren has taken another step. Um, we didn't know how things were gonna necessarily pan out coming into the season. We knew o- Oklahoma City was gonna be good. I think a lot of them, a lot of people have them coming out of the Western Conference. Um, I think it's because Chet Holmgren has taken another step. I think Jalen Williams is playing particularly well. And Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to be Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, I think the fact that they have more another year to kind of gain more continuity, get experience, they shoot the ball really well. They're defending at a high clip. Um, I think it, it just just another year of experience is, is giving them what they need to kind of remain a dominant force in, in the West. Mm-hmm. I will say you bet you mentioned another team and Phoenix is doing, is doing a really good job as well. And we saw them last night here in Dallas. I think when you have that big three of Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Bill, and you got guys like Nur- Nurkic, Nurkic has, has taken advantage of both matchups every time he's played um, against Dallas. He's able to stretch the floor. He's able to be a bully on the inside. Um, and then you got all the role guys like Tyus Jones, Josh Okoge. Um, I think that, that that group is 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 surprising a lot more people than people probably thought they were going to be. Uh, I think people thought this team, this would be the team that we saw last season, but they weren't able to stay healthy. And we really weren't able to see the potential of what that group could be. But now they have a point guard in Tyus Jones and they're able to kind of have that big three in Phoenix. I think we're seeing what Phoenix could be. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you uh, pivoted to them because I I definitely wanted to get into a little bit of Phoenix Suns talk. They are probably the big surprise of the year so far as far as winning them in Cleveland. Uh, But Phoenix specifically, you know, their their big three, you know, is just ridiculous offensive firepower. 
Yeah. Um, but the big question with them was, could that team as a collective group defend? Could they do some things that can, you know, uh, give them chances to win at the highest level when the games matter most, which is obviously in, in the playoffs. Uh, from what you've seen of them, um, are they a better team defensively this year? Or is it just simply having, you know, Durant, uh, Bill and Booker relatively healthy uh, that's feeling that this team's really fast start? Yeah, I think that they're, they're accepting the challenge of defending. There's a lot of guys out there in the league that that say they want to defend, but they don't actually show it when they when they get on the floor. Facts. Um, I think when you got a guy like Kevin Durant who likes to play both sides of the ball, we know he's exceptional on the offensive end, but he really takes the takes the challenge of guarding um, opposing teams' best player on a nightly basis. You got guys who can rotate, move their feet. Um, Bradley Beal isn't obviously the player he once was. Um, but I think a lot of those guys like to defend. Um, you got Plumlee coming off the bench. Um, and then you just got, I want to say, utility guys who kind of specialize. You, you need those wings to win. Everybody knows that's how Boston was able to um, beat the Mavericks in the finals last year. You need guys who can defend multiple positions um, and be versatile. So I, th- I think Phoenix is playing really good defense, but that, it, that offense is, is – is insane. Yeah. Uh, think about it. And I think that that's what, that's what a lot of people thought um, that Dallas would be coming into this year, especially when you add a guy like Clay Thompson, but it's taking, it's taking some figuring out early in the season. Yeah. They definitely are a team that I think it surprised people. Uh, but if you really sit down and let it marinate for a minute in your mind, they got three of the 10, 15 best players in the game. Uh, and they all bring something different to the table. And to the point that you made, and I think it's, it's maybe the most essential element in their success, is they got someone to set the table. They mm-hmm. didn't really have a legitimate point guard who was going to make sure everyone ate good. Uh, and they got that now. Uh, and, and so that they are definitely – uh, a team that I think has kind of figured out how to be the best version of themselves. And that's a little scary for the rest of the Western Conference. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. And do so with as little as four correct picks that can get you up to 100 times your money. Prize Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks is the best way to win real money this basketball season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on Prize Picks. Just download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Download the app today and use the code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Uh, but when you look at all the different things going on out west. Uh, you look over the east, and there's a lot of familiar faces that are still, you know, kind of at, at the head of the at the head of the snake, so to speak, as far as the top teams in the Eastern Conference. And you, you know, we'd be remiss in not starting off talking about the Boston Celtics. Uh, yeah. There's some other teams that there at least one other team with a better record, but the Celtics are still. They kind of have that we're still the team to beat swagger. Uh, from what you've seen about them, uh, is there anything different or unique about what they're doing now? Or are they just basically same old, same old Celtics? I think you can say they're the same old Celtics, but I think there's a different motivation. Last year, that they wanted to get over the hump, finally win a championship after knocking on the door year after year. Um, this year, I think they understand that they're still the best team in the NBA but the rest of the league has gotten better as well. But there's also been some slights towards Jason Tatum, towards Jalen Brown throughout the offseason. That's probably motivating them a little bit more this year. And I think you see it in Jason Tatum's play. He's playing like an MVP right now. Um, 
I saw that he kind of tweaked his jump shot. I'm not sure if it's reverted back to what it was, but he's shooting the ball well. And I think he he's he's really taken this season to heart. Um saw that he played against Golden State and he pretty much took more of a mature approach. And I think a lot of people thought that he would um, pretty much saying it was just another game on the schedule. Um, there's no extra juice or motivation. You know, guys can say that, but they probably feel something different. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I think it, it starts with Jason Tatum. And and once this team gets uh, Christoph Przingis back, I think that's when we'll be able to see the um, Boston Celtics that we saw in the finals last year. Yeah, because, I mean, that, that, that Golden State game, uh, Jalen Brown has missed a couple of games uh, dealing with a little minor uh, injury. Uh, I don't think Jalen would have lied to us and said that it was just another game if he would have been able to play against Golden State. Uh, it is he's the he's kind of like that straight no chaser dude. Uh, he he kind of keeps it a hundred, uh, probably more than he probably should sometimes. But uh, they're definitely playing good basketball, and in, in part because you know they they brought everyone back. And and the thing, the point that you made about them playing with a little extra motivation, uh, I don't think people really understand the value and importance of having a little bit more of an edge about you, uh, particularly when you're winning a championship. You look at the Denver Nuggets, you look at a lot of the more recent champs, the Milwaukee Bucks, and there's a clear and undeniable downward spiral that happens right after they win a championship. Uh, And the Celtics don't seem like they're uh, necessarily in that frame of mind. And I think in part of it, Michael, is because they – still feel they got something to prove. Like, Tatum's thinking, like, damn, I'm, I'm like, first team all NBA, but I can't get no run in the Olympics. And Jalen Brown's like, damn, I'm like, NBA Finals MVP. I can't even be on the damn team. Finding ways to keep yourself engaged is, is really important. And one team that I think has done that even better than the Celtics this year is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, that was a team that when the Celtics bounced them from the playoffs a year ago, it was like, is Donovan Mitchell, you know, planning his escape route or is is he going to stay around for the long haul? Is Evan Mobley ever going to be that dude that we all think he can be? Uh, and, and you know, the Allen kid, you know, good player. But can he be that stabilizing interior force at both ends of the floor they need? And are this is this Cleveland team uh, going to be properly motivated to be the best version of themselves? Do they need to get rid of the coach, which they did? Uh, and they, they brought in a guy. And Kenny Atkinson, who, if you look at his track record, the only thing that you can say that pretty much every team Kenny Atkins has been a part of does is they play hard. And yeah. Cleveland, they I've, I've watched him play four or five games this year. They're beating teams, but they're beating teams not only on the scoreboard, but also with effort. Have they, Michael, from what you've seen, been, more, been a bit of a surprise that they played as well? You figured they played pretty good, but are you surprised that they played as well as they have thus far this year? I am. I am. I think when we think of Cleveland, we always think of them as that four, fifth, maybe even sixth best team in the in the Eastern Conference. You, everybody all automatically assumes it's going to be Boston, New York, Milwaukee, Philly, and then you throw Cleveland in somewhere after there. I think that Donovan Mitchell, <laughs> um, coming off that extension, he he he's on a mission as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of guys who who play to a certain level before they get that money. Mm-hmm. But I think now that Donovan has secured the bag, he, he he's showing why he was worth that money. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you, you got to throw in Darius Garland too. I, th- I think a lot of people didn't question their fit. Um, are they, are they going to, going to work well together? Can they coexist? They both need the ball. Um, I think Darius Garland is playing with a re-energized, um, I guess, amount of effort and spirit coming into this season. And like you mentioned, they're beating teams and they're blowing them out. They got a lot of quality wins. They beat the Warriors recently. I think that was their last game. They beat the Knicks earlier this year. They beat the Bucks twice in a row. Um, that's another um, case that's mm-hmm. kind of interesting this season. But, yeah, the Cavaliers look good. They're 10-0 and undefeated. And they're clearly playing like the best team in the NBA right now. Um, one thing I'm interested in seeing is, is how long can they sustain this level of play? Right. A lot, of te- a lot of times you see teams um, get off to fast starts and somewhere down the line they fizzle out. Um, can this team stay healthy? Can this team stay motivated? And can this team continue to shoot the ball like they've been shooting? Yeah. You, you, you touched on a second ago the other team that has stood out for 
frankly, all the wrong reasons, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, question to you is, which has been the biggest surprise, Cleveland's success or Milwaukee's struggles? Milwaukee struggles. I think a lot of people thought that a, another a full season with Damian Lillard and Giannis um, would kind of help coming into this season, and that hasn't been the case. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw the clips going around about Giannis this morning. He's he's he's, he's, he's he pretty much said, if, if you don't want to be here, um, you can leave. We don't yeah. know who, who that was directed towards. We don't know if that was in just just towards media for he was talking off camera, but that was interesting in, in itself. So that, yeah. that kind of tells you where things are. You, you listen, the, 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 it, the, the temperature in that locker room now is a little high. Uh, and folks are starting to get a little hot. And whenever that happens, something has to change dramatically for them to, to get out of this malaise they're in. Uh, whether it's a lineup change, uh, I don't think it's going to be a coaching change. Uh, I'm pretty right. damn sure it's not going to be a coaching change, especially when you look at the coaching change they made when they brought Doc in. Uh, there's still there's still a lot of people in the NBA that I know and, and talk to who you know still kind of get a side eye to the Bucks for doing that because it's like not the guy that you had before was winning. He have they but Milwaukee had one of the best records in the NBA, not just you know in the East, in the NBA. And you cut him loose to bring in Doc, and they've basically been a 500 s team since. Uh and, and that's it, it, it's telling. It's it's telling that uh Milwaukee is in the state that they're in. When you think about, you know. They put themselves here. Like, literally, you put yourselves in this position to have to struggle the way you have when you decided to make a change in leadership. Uh, and I love Doc Rivers. Doc is one of my favorite coaches in the game. But I would, I can understand why, if you're a fan, you're thinking like, damn, Doc, seriously? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't make this move so that you could be a 500 team, so that you could be, you know, getting, you know, getting, getting your head smashed by, you know, average teams in the East. Uh, so it, it, it's been a surprise to see how how just horrific they've been. I mean, I think I think they've had like more double. They've had like a bunch of double digit losses. Uh, and it's not all been because, you know, Giannis has been in and out of the line or anything like that. I mean, even when he's healthy, they, they catch them else. So that, that's been a bit of a surprise. Now, I, I will say one, one team that I did want to highlight and we, we talked about it, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> I covered this team for the I, last two seasons. I was waiting for this. <laughs> Pistons are seventh in the East. <laughs> they have a better record than the Hawks, the Heat, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Bucks. <laughs> and I, I think I think a lot of people are blaming me. Now that I'm out of there, they probably can can thrive. <laughs> but exactly, exactly. They look for JB. Yeah, I, I hate I hate to break it to him, but uh, they were kind of trashing it out the place before you showed up on the scene. Uh, I was I was joking with somebody about it, like, yo, this is this is the Pistons team that I remember. Like w- when I covered the team, they were ahead of Philly, they were ahead better than Milwaukee, they were better than all these teams that they're now better than. But uh, Detroit, I will say this though, uh, when the Celtics played them earlier this year in Detroit, that was a game. I mean that was a really good game, and it, it was, yeah, it was it was a reminder that this Detroit team, um, in the right situation with the right proper motivation and right coaching, it seems like they could be a they could be a playoff team. Now the one thing I criticize, I, I'm critical of them about, and I've seen this happen time and time again with them, is they play at a certain level when they're playing great teams. They play at a different level when they're playing average to below average teams, and it's just like the effort that they played against the against Boston, if they played most, if not all the games like that, they would win like 40, 45 games. Easy, easy. Uh, and, and so they've got some talent there uh, and they just got to stay healthy and they've got to keep growing that thing. And then to me, they got to have a little bit of patience and let these guys gel and, and, and develop chemistry. Uh, they're going to be pretty good. Uh, they, they, in a lot of ways, they are the, the type of roster that is going to cause problems. They got youth, athleticism, multi-positional guys who can defend. And when you have them things going for you, look at Oklahoma City. 
the, the, the Oklahoma City is good because they got good players, but they got good, versatile players who can hurt you in a multitude of ways. I mean, Chet can go out and get you 20 and 10. He can also alter or block four or five shots a game, too. And next thing you know, you know, if those nights where he's not scoring, he's still impacting the game. Detroit is starting to get players who can do those things. The, the big fella, uh, Duran, uh, I love him. Uh, he, he's got like low key dog in him. Uh, and, and, and Cade, I know, ain't no low key. Dick. Cade is a dog. And I like that. He just hasn't been healthy enough and he hasn't been in position to showcase uh, his talents because he's going to be a good player. He, he's going to be an all star at some point. It may not be this year, but it's going to happen. Uh, he's great triple doubles, too. That's what I'm saying. He balling out. He balling out. Basketball season will be here before you know it, and that is great news for Celtics Nation as the Boston Celtics look to defend their league best 18th NBA title. There's no better way to get in on the action than game time, which is where you can find the best deals on basketball, football, as well as concert tickets, NFL, and so much more. One of my favorite game time features is game time picks, which makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste a ton of time searching through thousands of tickets. One of the hottest tickets out there will be the opening night for the Boston Celtics, which is when they'll get their championship rings prior to facing the much improved New York Knicks. You can bet emotions will be running high, and the same can be said for the cost of getting into the building. Not a problem, especially with Game Time app where prices tend to be lower for tickets the closer you get to tip off. And figuring out where you want to sit is a breeze. Having the map of the TD Garden laid out before you on the app, along with the different color price coding throughout, it makes it super easy to find the best seats for your budget and not have to scramble all over your app to do so. And you're covered by Game Time's lowest price guarantee, where Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So the East is looking a lot better. M- Milwaukee be damned. But the rest of the most of the East the conference teams are looking better. And so my, my question to you, Michael, as, as we kind of you know transition out of this, yeah. who do you think is gonna wind up being the last team standing in the East? Who do you think is gonna get to the NBA finals coming out of the East? You put me on the spot. Because you got some options. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of options. You may I, I hate to push back on this. You said the East is good, but I'm looking at the standings right now, and it's Cleveland. Is Boston the only two teams that have winning records? Everybody else is five hundred or below. They're knocking each other out, man. Yeah, yeah. So that that, that kind of speaks to the competitiveness of the conference and how, how they're kind of going against each other to start the season. But if I have to take a pick, I'm gonna go with Boston. I'm not gonna go against them until they're dethroned. Um, I like what I'm seeing from the Knicks. I think that fit with Cat and Jalen Brunson is is nice. They're four and four right now, but I think they're still figuring some things out, but Cat is getting his numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, I like what Cleveland is doing, but I'm not sure. I don't know how long it's it's going to be able to last. Um, I think the only team in that mix right now is the Celtics, and they're proven. Um, and who else? the Sixers? They're a mess right now. The Bucks? They're a mess right now. So it's going to take some. It's going to it's going to take an uphill climb for them to get back in the mix. But I'm going with Boston right now. Let's come out of the East. Yeah, I, I thought I thought Orlando could be a sleeper, but Vincero, he's been hurt. So, but, so we'll we'll see how if they can get it back. And I'm gonna put you put you on the spot. Who's coming out the West? Yo, neck of the woods, yo hood. Who's coming out west? Um, and, and I, keep I, in mind, this is just after one month of season. I know things change, yeah. but the first month of the season, if you had to put money on one of these teams to come out the West, who's that team? Yeah, I, I I wrote in my preview. Um, I had the Mavs and the OKC Thunder in the Western Conference Finals. I had the Thunder going to the finals, and I'm not going to go away from that now. Um, okay. After a month, um, I'm going to go with the Thunder. Okay. And they're, I mean, they're obviously right now, they're playing great basketball. Uh, and the thing that they did that I, I thought was really impressive was that I thought they needed a little bit more muscle in the front court. 
uh, for the playoffs. They could get they could get by with whatever they they rocking right now like, through regular season, but they're gonna need some muscle, more muscle in the playoffs. And getting Isaiah Hardelstein from from New York was huge to me. Even though he hasn't obviously done much with with health and all that stuff, they don't need him now. They need him on the dog days of April and May, and, and for their sake, they hope June because. They're they're going to be in some dog fights. Teams are not just going to. Just, I mean, and I'm thinking one team specifically that we haven't talked anything about was Minnesota. Uh, they, it's like I want to love Minnesota. <laughs> but Julius Randle, I have a kind of a love hate relationship with that dude. Like I love certain parts of his game, but I hate the fact that the ones parts that I don't like, he ain't trying to get better at. Like he is a. I mean, he is a walking easy pass defensively. I mean, guys, he, the light is always – the doors are always open <laughs> if, you, if you're trying to go at Julius. And he he got into it with one of the assistant coaches who, you know, saw yes. that he blew an assignment and that coach did what you're supposed to do. Coach him up. Let him know what he did wrong. And Julius didn't particularly care for that. Uh, he's never particularly cared for that, uh, which was why – for the life of me, I don't know how long – I don't know how he lasted as long as he did with Tibbs uh, because Tibbs is all about that D. And Julius is not about that D uh, at all. So they're a team that I, I want to like because there's so many other pieces about them I do like. But, damn, Julius, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, see, on the other hand, they got youth. They got shooting. They got leadership. They got bangers now. They got a, a solid coach who knows his role. He's not trying to overcoach. He's not, but he's putting his imprint on what they do. He's got that perfect balance of being the right person at the right place at the right time with the right team. Um, I got OKC coming out West too. And I, I got to be an OKC in Boston uh, in the finals. Uh, and, and again, I, I haven't picked a winner yet because it's too damn early to pick a winner. Yeah. But I do know this though. I like the fact that, both of those teams are going to be significantly challenged. Uh, both of those teams have multiple teams in their respective conferences that are going to push them to be better. Uh, OKC is not going to walk, just run away with that thing. Minnesota going to have something to say about that. Phoenix, they're going to have something to say about that. Dallas going to have something to say about it before it's all is said and done. And then the East, you know, the Celtics, yeah, they're, they're the champs. But Cleveland is like, yo, we ain't scared of y'all. The Knicks are like, yo, we, yes, y'all, y'all, y'all. Smash is real good on opening night, but we ain't afraid of y'all either. And Philadelphia will continue to tell themselves, as soon as we get Joel back, as soon as we get PG back, we're going to be all right. Uh, so we just kind of let them stay in, in that dream state and, and, and keep feeling good about themselves like that. But there are multiple teams that it, whoever emerges uh, from the East and the West, you will not there, – there, there are no cakewalks. Uh, there just aren't. Uh, people thought that, you know, when the Celtics got to the finals last year, that they, they got a bunch of breaks. But the thing is this, you still got winning games. I mean, it's, it's not like just because you on paper are better than the team. That means you're going to win the game by 10, 15 points. No, you still got to play the game. Uh, and, and so I, I just I look at both the East and West as though whoever emerges, you you can't just play the game. You got to play the game well in order to win. Uh, and. Even though Dallas is like hovering around 500, look, as long as you got somebody like Ky like Luca and Kyrie in the mix and Clay Thompson, we all know Clay can get it going at any given moment. Uh, yeah. He can easily score like 20 points in a quarter, score 20 points in a half. And next thing you know, in a playoff situation, to have a guy that has that type of instant elite offense in his bag. Yeah. That could be the difference between you getting out of the first and second round. That could be the difference between you getting back to the final or getting bounced in the first round. So yeah, it's not about November at the end of the day, when it comes to these teams that we're talking about, it's all about April, May, and June. Yeah. And the te teams. Yeah. I mean, to your point, teams like Oklahoma city and Minnesota, they need those months leading up to it in order to get confidence. And as you pointed out earlier, to just kind of develop consistency. But yeah. once they've already done that, okay. See, it's like, okay, let's just, you know, do what we need to do between now and like April and come April. Let's fire it up. Let's go. Uh, so it's the, this has been a fun start for me to the league because uh, yeah. it seems like everyone is either balling out or getting balled on badly. Uh, like Milwaukee, again, probably the biggest disappointment in the NBA so far this season. Uh, whenever you, whenever you are in the standings and Detroit is looking down on you, because like about a week, week, less than a week ago, and I was looking at the standings and you know you just kind of you skimming the teams at the top and you get to the bottom like oh damn. 
Detroit got three wins. Milwaukee's got like one or, uh, one or two wins. I'm like, damn, that's when you know. And you one, know. one thing I'm going to be looking out for, especially like over the last three weeks, obviously we've seen how the standards are shaping out, but the, the in-season tournament is about to start and competition is about to take an uptick. I'm not sure how you feel about the in-season tournament, but I, I, <laughs> I like the competition aspect of it. Well, I, I like the concept. It's a, it's a concept that I can get behind, but – when the team that wins the championship, they don't even make the damn playoffs. It's just like it's kind of like winning the preseason NIT and you don't get to the NCAA tournament. It's yeah. like, OK, you got that nice preseason NIT chip. That's nice. Put a banner up if you want. But <laughs> the banner what mean in, yeah, what does it mean in the grand scheme of things? I, I think this year, though, I think the team that comes out as the winner is probably going to be one of the better teams. Like I look I absolutely expect like. Boston, Oklahoma City, uh, Dallas, Minnesota, Cleveland. I expect one of those five, one of those top six teams to be the winner. Uh, I don't think you'll see a thing like last year where, you know, LeBron, well, of course, you know, LeBron going to be LeBron. Uh, want to be first at everything. Uh, but realize that, man, I guess when that NCAA turn really don't mean a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so I, I think one of the better teams will win it this year. Uh, so that, and I hope it's that way, because if we get another year where, like, Somebody like Chicago Bulls win the in-season tournament and they don't make the playoffs. Yeah. There's, then the, it, then that tournament lose it loses even more credibility and and, and it gets the side eye from everyone uh, because it's like, hey, let's get ready for the in-season tournament. Be like, what? And get ready to not make the playoffs? Hell no. Yeah. Nah. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, listen. Uh, this has been good catching up with you, brother. This has been really, really good, uh, Michael. First, let, let the folks know where they can find your copy at and, and, and all the, the musings that you have on the NBA and the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, you can find everything I write, dallasnews.com. Um, I'm on Twitter slash X at Mike A. Curtis, too. And it's always fun chopping up with you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Michael Curtis of the Dallas Morning News. Uh, this is the Big 3 NBA Podcast. Thanks for tuning out. Catch it on all your podcasting apps. Download it. Leave a review. Five preferable, if you don't mind. Uh, much love to everyone. And again, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and week. And we will see you around soon. Take care, folks. <laughs>